<laughs> two weeks in, two weeks into my birth, uh, they were busted. Because my mother lived in a, in a two family and her sisters lived across the way and they were booking and betting. And my father wasn't even booking. My father just owned a restaurant. He was an innocent. And, uh... All right, it's Monday at 11 o'clock. Welcome to the Chaz Palmetary Podcast. I'd like to remind you, uh, I am going to be at the Paramount Theater. January 21st. What is that day? January 21st at the Paramount Theater in Huntington, Long Island. My favorite place. I've been there. God knows how many times. I love playing there. Uh, what's after the Paramount Theater, John? Next one you got is February 9th at West Palm Beach, Florida at the Kravis Performing Arts Center. Right. Then we got March, March 9th at the Avalon in Niagara Falls. And then March 23rd, New London, Connecticut at the Guard Arts Center. Now, the Kravis Performing Arts Center, that's in West Palm Beach, right? That's in West Palm Beach. All right. So come and see the show that started it all before the movie, before the musical. Don't forget to check out my restaurants, Charles Palm and Terry, 30 West 46th Street and 264 Main Street. Go to charlespalmentary.net. So I've been trying to get this great actor, comic, comedian, Dancer, singer. I mean, the guy does everything. I mean, talk about a talent. I'll tell you, he's on a show. Uh, it's a great show, and he's been on it forever. And the show is called, and my wife, and when the kids knew he was coming, forget about it. It was like Elvis was coming here. <laughs> and uh, it's the truth. He's a gr- really incredibly talented guy. Mario Cantone. Mario. So after the uh, Niagara Falls show, you're going to put yourself in a barrel and go over the falls. <laughs> is that right? Because no. I, that's what I'm coming for. I'm not coming for the show. You're not coming for the I show. I want to see you go down the falls in a barrel <laughs> and survive. Uh, I do. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Mario, I, I mean, so many things to talk to you about, but I, I want to start at the beginning. Oh. You're from Boston, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, yeah. Where did you grow up in Boston? I grew up in, outside of Boston. Well, my, the history isn't from Everett, Massachusetts, but when I was two, my father moved my mother from uh, Everett to Stoneham, 15 minutes away, to get her away from uh, her sisters because they were all booking and betting in the house. Oh, yeah, it's great. Two weeks, um, <laughs> two weeks in, two weeks into my birth, uh, they were busted. Because my mother lived in a, in a two family, and her sisters lived across the way in another two family, Joe and Mickey, and um, my favorite aunt, my aunt Joe, um, and they were booking and betting. And my father wasn't even booking; my father just owned a restaurant. He was an innocent, and uh, I mean, they you know they were just booking, yeah. booking. It was they were That's booking. Nothing, but the yeah. thing is, my mother not only booked, she bet. So it was like, you know, selling the cocaine and doing it instead of just selling it and making the money and shutting the fuck up. Yeah. Anyway, she, uh, they got busted and my father took the rap because the phone was under his name. He took the rap, he got a suspended sentence and he, um, uh, he, 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 his lawyer said to him, look, I can get this erased. I can get this off your record. Let's appeal. So he listened to the lawyer. He appealed. He appeals. He goes to jail for three months. <laughs> and, and and when they raided the house, they were ripping up slips and throwing them down the toilet. My my oldest sister was mortified. She's there with their boyfriend. Right. She's like, ah, this is horrible. It was, right. oh, it was like a drug bust. So he goes to jail for three months. And then cut to my father. My father moves us to Stoneham to get her away from the sisters and for her to stop betting and booking. She gave it all up. She teaches my father how to book. He booked. He was a bookie, but he didn't bet. He owned a restaurant in Boston. When I was maybe 15, 16, they raided him. He got busted for booking. He goes to court. The judge is the lawyer that told him to appeal 20 years before that, and he let him go. And let him go. You cannot write that. And I was told that story by my brother, Teddy. Talk uh, about luck. The night of of my my father's funeral. So, yeah. Wow. Now, your dad owned the restaurant. I mean. Yeah. So, it was called Cantones, and at night, it was a very famous rock and roll punk new wave club that all the kids at Emerson College, I was the only one that liked R&B. I would yeah. go see Luther Vandross and Stephanie Mills and Phyllis Hyman and Earth, Wind and & Fire, and they were going to see like the Cars. And right, the, right, right, and, and yeah, the, yeah. You know, so they were all, all those punk groups played my father's club. There was the Rat Skeller and Cantones. So that, that's what it was. And during the day, it was a 
you know, lunch in place. So you grew up with food around the house oh and food. God, yeah. yeah, my mother cooked. She hated it, but she cooked. Was she now your mother was Italian? She was course. yeah, she was originally her family's from Avellino. Avellino. And my father was from Shaka. Shaka, yeah. yes. So yeah. So as you know, as, as you know I know, because well, my family's in Shaka uh, now. I yes. know. Menfi Shaka, right? That's yes, your they're from Menfi and then they moved to it's Shaka. It's right next to it. Right next to it, yes. Um yeah, so they, we 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 cooked we we cooked my father, my mother cooked a lot. My aunt Jo, who was my mother's sister, who was my favorite. Like when my mother was sick, she moved in with us for six months and took care of us and cooked for us. And she would make the sauce the way my mother would make it. My mother would make it thinner, like a lighter sauce. I like a lighter sauce. Yeah, too. that's how my mother my, my mother would make it. Yeah. My aunt Joe would make a thicker sauce, but she would make a lighter sauce for see, my father. See, people don't realize that is the, the people go, is it pasta or is it gravy? I go, look, sauce is when it's light. Gravy is when you put all the meat it's, in it and it takes thicker. three or four hours. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. So I was, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I grew up calling it gravy, but you know, Me people too. get very pissed off about it. Very pissed it's off. It's like, all it. right. I have a line in in Gravesend, the show that we did together, yes. which was, where I punch a guy in the face and I go, "It's it's 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 not gravy. It's sauce. You fucking asshole." Oh, I, I remember I that. Yes. I got to punch a guy. I love that role. Yes, and he was terrific. Mario and I, we did Gravesend together yep. with, with William. With William, De William De Mayo. De Mayo, and it was. I never had a role written like that where he's a guy from the neighborhood and right. you know he becomes a, a successful um, des designer and and yeah. and he comes back to the neighborhood I, and and I get. I get to, it's a different role. Now, you have a brother? I have two brothers. I have an older brother, Teddy, a younger brother, Joey. Uh, my sister, Marion, who was an actress and a cabaret singer. She passed away a few years ago, but she was my older sister. And she oh, was the reason why I, why I got into the business. So, you know, she was... And my sister, Camille, who doesn't leave Saugus, Massachusetts. She lives in a home, and she's not in a home home. She's in her house, and right, she right. doesn't like to go out. She doesn't like to yeah, go out. Yeah, a little agoraphobic. Now, what, uh, that's a good question. This is what I want to ask you. Growing up, Italian American in Boston, yep. when did you get the show business? Well, thing? my mother used to sing on the radio when she was younger, um, and she turned me on to Judy Garland and you know Barbara Streisand. My mother turned me on to all that music. We would see movies together. You know, she she would they would make me. I knew Judy the Judy Garland Carnegie Hall album. It's a two album set. I knew every word of it at two years old. I would get up on the table and sing it for company, and then. She was pissed off that I was gay. So it was like, Ma, mixed messages. <laughs> really? But uh, it was like, come on. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, but I, that's, and my, my mother gave up singing and mm, to get married and become a bookie. And, um, wow. and then uh, my sister went to Emerson College, which I graduated from, and she went years before me. And I used to go see her do plays, and she was the reason why I became an actor and a comedian i guess too and she used to yeah. play the old clubs in new york like reno sweeney's and the right. grand finale and and the bushes like all those clubs right were you a that. were you a comedian first or an actor first? i was well i guess it was kind of i don't know i mean i my first professional theater engagement was at the north shore music theater in beverly massachusetts where i did the musical the rothschilds you were very young i was young i was 12 years old and, right. I, and the I star of it yes. was shelly i remember reading that yeah. yes shelly burman shelly burman was the star and um we had him over for dinner it, on a Sunday. Shelly Berman. Shelly Berman. I, I invited him over. I said, my mother's going to cook for you. She, she, he, the Sunday in between the two weeks we had off, and then the owner of the theater at the time, his name was Stephen Slane, asked him to go to dinner a few days before that. He goes, I'm sorry, I'm going to Mario's. So he ended up coming. My mother kept going, he's not coming. I'm like, Ma, he's coming. <laughs> he's not coming. He's not going to come here to eat. I said, Ma, I asked him. I gave him direct. He's not going to come. He shows up. And she's like, oh, my God. She's like, I, if I knew you were coming, I would have made eggplant. I mean, she was like. He's funny, too, Shelley Berman. Oh, he was brilliant he's in this funny. role. He yeah, played Mayor, funny. Mayor Rothschild. He was brilliant. And I don't know if he ever knew that I became a stand-up comedian because that's what he was. He, right. He, he was a stand-up. Oh, he was brilliant. And a lovely guy. And it was it was a, a memorable time in my now, life. Now, growing up at that time, who were your uh, did was there anybody you admire as far yeah. as comic comedians yeah. or actors? I I, I, I mean, it, Robert Klein was a big one for me. Yeah, uh, Lily Tomlin was a big one for me. Um, uh, Richard Pryor, Steve Martin was a was yeah. a big one. And and then there was a guy whose name was Craig Russell, who was a brilliant female impersonator that that uh, he did a movie called Outrageous in, in, in a Canadian movie. That he was a cult figure. He played Carnegie Hall twice. Once was Triumph and yeah. once he was drunk and wasted. And I ran his spotlight when I was 19 years old in Provincetown. He was a genius. He did everybody from Sophie Tucker to Janis Joplin, Carol Channing, Betty Davis, Joan Crawford. He did them all. And I learned, I mean, I did some of those impressions, but I learned my impressions from him 
although I didn't do it in drag I, because I loved what Lily Tomlin would do on stage. She would do all these characters, whether they were men or women, and she just did them in a blouse and, sh and pants. And that's how I wanted to work. I didn't like props. I don't like yeah, bringing me, shit me on stage. I just want, you do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, play all I those don't like characters that. in a Broxdale, yes. and you just do it. So I, I did many imitations of old female movie yeah. stars, yet I would not do them in drag because I, I just, I want to be able to go in and out. And right, do my and you can't do it like that. No, right, you can't. Right now, when you did stand, now, what were, and I won't ask you to do any, but what was your impersonations that you did? I, my, my, I think the first impersonation I did was, um, I mean, some of the Lily Tomlin stuff, like Edith Ann and Ernestine, her operator. But, but I mean, one Ju ring, yeah, one ring, you know, all that. Yeah. And then Julia Child was my big one. Oh, That's the Julia one I would do all the time. Child. Julia Child, and and you know. <clears throat> And now it's just, you know, Betty Davis and Catherine Hepburn and Ju Judy Garland and Liza Minnelli. And I do Jim Morrison. I do Bruce Springsteen. I, I do a lot. You of, actually, you do singing, I do. Too. I sing. Oh, I sing. I know you're a really good I singer. I love singing. My husband w is a Broadway guy. He's a director and writer. But right. He did a lot of Broadway stuff. And he, most beautiful voice. And um, he made me a better singer. And he wrote all the original music for my one-man show on Broadway, Laugh For, and for... For my stand up, and I heard that show and I, I didn't see it. I, I apologize, but I heard that one man show was it was incredible. fun. It's, it's, you don't want to go back and do it again. I, I would do another one if someone said, Hey, come on, let's go, let's do it. But I'm I don't have the drive to go, someone finance this and do this. Oh, I don't yeah, care. Yeah. I don't care. I, I'm tired. Come get me out of bed when you need me. I really want to sleep till two in the afternoon right, every right, friggin' right. day. I, I intermittent live. That's what you know how they intermittent fasting. Yes, you eat at two. I love and, intermittent fasting. Well, I intermittent live, Jess. I get up at two and then eat, and then you know eat at seven and then go to bed at two. So you don't want to get crazy. You want to just relax. I do, and I and you look this Sex in the City, the sequel to this, and just like that has come back. We got renewed for a third season. It's the only reboot that's ever been, you know, made an even second season really, um, and it's it's a big big hit. Yeah, that's and really. I, and my characters uh, become richer and rounder and more three dimensional and and a much bigger part of it. I'm now a regular. I was never a regular on a series ever in my life. You so weren't a regular. Never. I was a recurring role, like Paul Lind on Bewitched. But you twelve were, episodes. You were on that thing. So but much. I did both movies too, which kind of cemented. And you it. did both movies. And so that cemented it. And this came along and. I became a regular, and, and, and Michael Patrick King and, the, and and all the writers, they just write the character brilliantly. Well, you're so I'm unique. I mean, you, your it. character and the way you do it is, I mean, you're, you're like a character. It's, you're so unique. It's also, you know, it's, it's a very specific thing because when you get offered gay roles, sometimes it's all that, you know, Oh, honey, sweetie. I don't want to call anybody honey, sweetie, or sweetheart. I want to just play it the way I would play it. You know, I right. used to be too gay, and now I'm not gay enough. So it's like, you know, it's unbelievable what's happened in this world. And, and you know, they thought, I, I mean, I would be called a screaming queen back then. And it's like, yeah, okay. And now it's like, I, He's I, not, it's, gay I'm not gay enough. It's so weird. But... But by I think the spe the speci specificity what was yeah. the word Speci the specificness Speci yeah. of my character on Sex and the City is a very Italian American gay man from back from the eighties from the nineties from the eighties but from a neighborhood yeah I I think he I, I mean I, I'm you know I think he's a, a, probably a, yeah. a New Yorker for sure yes um, he's you know and now he's he's evolved I mean. He now owns this, I was a wedding planner, now I'm not. Now I'm a baker, which is, I hated being a wedding planner because I didn't get that gay gene. I couldn't design a, I don't care about your dress or your shoes or I don't want right, to design right. this room. I don't know yeah. how to do that. My husband can do that. Christmas, he puts it up. I don't do it. I'm looking, I'm, I'll throw a piece of tinsel, tinsel on the tree. I'm like, all right, I'm done. You know, I, I, I can't, I can't do it. So... The fact that I was became because I said to Michael Patrick King, "How did you come up with it?" Because he knew that I baked. I've known Michael Patrick King oh. from the improv days on Forty Fourth and Ninth when I did my stand up. So when I was doing my, you know, my my beginning work at, at the improv, which I love that club, but he he wrote me this part years ago. So he made him a baker for the new for the new for the new um, episode that was series, smart. which was great. So I I sell hot sourdough bread and it's delivered by hot guys muscular guys in onesies and it's called hot fellas bread and i'm like that's <laughs> genius and i bake bread and I, I bake a banana bread and sell it to a coffee hot shop fellas. Down the street. hot fellas bread it's and it's great and i i remember the first season i said to him so because i was married 
to to uh, Willie Garson, who played Stanford, who who passed away after the. He left the show after two and a half episodes because he was very ill. It was a very sad, weird, horrible thing. Um, but the show, you know, he Michael had a right on the fly for me because he had a whole storyline for us. So he wrote incredible stuff for me, and it just kept going. My I, my thing was, well, if I'm hiring all these hot guys, I must be messing around with them in the bakery because Anthony was a very promiscuous character um, in the past. And he said, no, 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 you've evolved. You don't shit where you eat. This is this is a new thing for you and I went that's great and in the second season you find out that I only hire straight guys so I don't cross that line because I hire a guy who I thought was straight and he ends up being gay and coming on to me and we end up having this relationship so Whoa. it's a very interesting thing and this that the storyline I had this past year was we had a lot of hills and valleys and it was right. really smart and good and now I have to ask you and and he had the guy that I play opposite of is an is an Italian Italian on the show Italian He's, Italian and this guy <clears throat> his his name is Sebastiano Pagazzi his grandfather was a guy named um, Bud Spencer he was like an Italian American right. uh, spaghetti western star. And he's all over pictures of him all over Naples. Like we have right. Elvis, they've got Bud Spencer. So this guy is is. It, I just said to Michael, all I want you to do, I don't care what he is, make sure he's Italian, make sure he's Italian, because I am so done with. Because this is the thing. I, I believe, you know, if you look at, you should be able to play it, um, and so, you know, yeah, I, I, agree, I, I, I just. I went to see a show and there was an Italian family and the father of the Italian family was, was, was Cuban and they were all incredible and I wouldn't replace any of them. They were all brilliant, but the, he was Cuban. The mother was a Puerto Rican actress. Um, the, the sister was a, 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 a Turkish girl. The brother was a Middle Eastern boy. I'm like, that's all great, but I can't play Puerto Rican. I can't play, no. I can't play Middle Eastern. I cannot play maybe Cuban. Uh, Jews and Italians play each other all the time. We actually don't have a problem with that. Um, but I, they'll come after me if I play that. But yet they can, play, until everybody can play anybody. You. No, but I you agree can, with this you. This is not that. fair. It's not fair. Did you, and we I, don't stand up for it either, but it's no, our fault. That's our fault. Look, uh, again, I, I, I love opera. You love opera. I love opera. And Dead Man Walking, oh. which was great. There was a couple there. Her father was black. And he was great, which is fine. Do you remember the, the yes, yeah? And I go, well, wait a minute. He's black. That's his daughter, but it's never mentioned or never said it's anything. It's done. But I go, and he's brilliant and wonderful. But well, wait a second. So I always say, how does that work? I mean, shouldn't we be able to? I mean, do you imagine if one of us played a part in a in a in a black drama no. that that we're supposed to be? I because I don't think that's right. I think. You know, I think. Look, I, I, I just like I said, if look, we can't play black folk, we can't play black I because can't we're play. because we we don't look it. I'm talking about the Mediterranean area of people: Spanish, right. uh, Greek, Italian, Middle Eastern. We all kind of look the same if yes. we're on the darker edge of it, which right. I am. Yes, you know, so I, I, anything you, you we can't play that. I mean, I. It's just. I mean, you I, could play, I, but I could, they won't but I, allow you. It's not going to be good. But but yet anybody can play Italian American. This is my problem, and I think it's a fair point. Yeah, I think it's a fair point too. Now, I have to ask you, and if you don't feel like talking about it, that's ah, uh, you can. What? Okay. Growing up, Italian American in Boston, and did you know you were gay from very oh, young? Oh yeah, I came out of the womb with a microphone and a <laughs> mic cord wrapped around my neck, singing "You Made Me Love You." <laughs> Yeah, I would knew. I knew. I knew really early on. You knew. Oh, early. I fucking knew. I just knew. I was, you know, I when I, I mean, was uh, when I was five years old. I I thought there were young boys that I my 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 classmates were cute. I'm, I I was very sexually aware at a very young age, uh, not sexually aware, but knew what I liked. Um, my mother was not good with it. My father was like, no, oh, whatever. Your father was okay. Well, you know what's interesting, Chess? My father was Sicilian. My mother was from. You know, Avellino in the Naples area. You would think the opposite. Well, let me tell you. When I went to Naples and the Amalfi Coast, and I was with my husband, and we weren't holding hands and making out, but they sent something. There was a, you felt a thing from certain restaurant owners, from certain, like they put us in another room. Uh, there was a thing. I felt there was two brothers that owned a coffee shop, and each day they kind of got 
This was in Ravello. They got more and more like, and they said to my husband, who's a black man? Are you Cuban? And it was just a weird way they said it. And anyway, then we go to Sicily. It's the exact opposite. Not a feeling of any. Nothing. He said, whatever, like, whatever you want. You know, they don't yeah. want to see you fucking in the streets, but they're like, right. do whatever you want to do. They don't care. And my father was like that. Like, whatever. And my mother was like, oh, no. So it was this psychological epiphany that I had when I went to both those places that like, yeah, this is why she was like this. And this is why he was like that. It was, Sicilians are, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, as long as you don't fuck with anybody or hurt right, anybody, right, they're right, like, right. whatever you want to do. Yeah. I mean, look, I don't know what it's like, you know, in, in the in in the business in the in the, in the mafia or the, or that business yeah. I don't know what it's like there yeah. but you know I, I, in in the fan in Sicilian families I always felt kind of like whatever and my father was cool my father my father had a lot of women he never left my mother but he had a lot of women you know he had a, a woman for years on the side Whoa. his waitress Helene who was a lovely lady <laughs> waitress a waitress your head waitress Helene Irish woman from from uh, Charlestown. Right. Uh, Massachusetts and 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 nice lady and you know he yeah I had another brother that I found out about it at third at, when I was thirty your brother was gay my half brother Philip was gay we didn't even know about him until after my mother died oh you because your father had an affair with somebody oh yeah 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 so you know and then we try to bring him into the family and my father freaked out he was like very no. old he was he was fine with them but he was he was the most uncomfortable one about it. Um, and I remember saying to him, Dad, I, we know about Philip. He was like, what are you talking about? I said, well, I found the picture. I found a picture of him. It looked like just like my father. It looked like they cut off his head and sewed it on. Yeah. He was like, I said, I found the picture. He was like, that's you. I'm like, that's not me. <laughs> I didn't go to high school in the 80s. Right. So uh, it was. Wow. Yeah. So we found out. But and I said, my father, I said, I remember my father saying to me, I said, Dad, thank you for accepting my lifestyle. Mm. And he said to me, well, thank you for accepting mine. And I went, touche. Oh, wow. Touche, Dad. That's right. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So he was kind of, he was cool. He loved, he I mean, loved, he was loved there my a, husband, Jerry. He was there a him. moment that you came out? Was there like a, 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 I a, never came out to my mother. You never came out to your Not mother? To my, my, my mother died when I was 21. So I didn't really have time. But, but she, she knew. She knew and she did not like it. It was very. Um, but sometimes I wonder, Mario, it's. It's not because they object to you. They object to the way people are going to look at them. Well, sure. I think they also object that they know it's a, it was, at the time, especially as a very difficult, um, Life. difficult lifestyle to, to lead. And you, you're not. It's not. It's looked. It's not. It looked. It's not. It wasn't looked upon favorably at all in the '70s and the '80s. You know, it's funny in the '70s. <sighs> you know, gay liberation, it was called, it was happening and it was progressing. And, 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 and even I think the civil rights movement was progressing, was all kind of progressing towards a positive light. And then AIDS hit, which included gay people and especially black people in Africa was very prevalent. It was ki killing those two groups, which is, uh, I don't know if that was a coincidence or not, but it, that's who it was killing. And, that slapped the gay liberation movement back about 30 years, I would think. Really? And oh, yeah. It was it went way back. I remember movies were being made. Martin Sheen and Hal Holbrook in that certain summer on TV. Billy Crystal in, in, uh, in, in Soap. That's true. I mean, it was true, really progressing man. in the 70s. Right. It was being dealt with. And in the 70s, that was being dealt with in a very kind of cool, casual way. You know, black families on television, especially Norman Lear stuff. Right. Just they were just doing it, talking and, about and talking, gay, and do, talking about gay, talking about race. There was you look at movies on Turner Classic movies that are from the seventies, and there's some there's a lot of interracial casting, and producers weren't patting themselves on the back like they are now. Like, look what we did. You know, they were just doing it organically. Midnight Cowboy. Yes, yes all of it. It you look. You, it, it's amazing, and it just all got slapped back. And I think you, you know, know, I never thought about oh, that. Yeah. No one. They just, it just, it came, the gay liberation movement, and then because racism is so embedded in this country, that just, you know, went backwards too because it, it just did. But uh, yeah, and now you know, gay is cool, and I'm got one foot in the grave and one foot on a banana peel. So <laughs> thanks, thanks for the anticlimactic career. Government and people. Right now, gay's back in now. Yeah. Oh, it's big. Big. It's big. Big.
Huge. Big, no, it's you're huge. right. It's no, huge. You're, it's huge. If you're not gay, you're done. You're right. Pack up your makeup and your clown no, kit but, and go. But most of the all the new plays and new movies, yeah, it's, it's everything. there's a, somebody gay. Oh, some, oh, every, something going on. It's very, you know, and we talk about Dead Man Walking, who the libretto was written by the great late um, Terrence McNally, who yeah. was a great gay, great gay playwright. He wrote The Ritz. Right. With uh, with Rita Moreno, the play that was later right. made into a great movie. And he wrote Love, Valor, Compassion, which was my first Broadway show. And I replaced Nathan Lane in it. Was that your first break yeah. on Broadway, oh, you would yeah. say? That was Joe Mantello, who directed three out of the Joe five Mantello, Broadway that's right, shows yeah. that I've done. He actually was the original director of uh, Dead Men Walking the Opera when they did it in San Francisco 20 years ago. Really? Yeah. And he, because he was very, you know, he had a very close relationship with Terrence McNally. So in his first show he directed was Love, Valor. And he saw me do stand-up. He knew Nathan was leaving to go do... Birdcage, because Nathan only did it on Broadway for about a month and a half, and then I, I got the part, and I went in, and I did it, and it was terrifying and great, and I always say it was all downhill from there. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to replace Nathan. I, I mean, know it was horrifying. That is. Oh, they Joe would go go and watch him do it, and I watched it once, and then I couldn't see it again. I was like, it's it, the laugh density was insane, and I'm <laughs> like, I'm not watching this. It's. To- but I, I did it. I did it. I did it. I did an okay job. I had a great time in that cast. Or, some of that cast of Friends Forever and John Benjamin Hickey and Justin Kirk. And I mean, it it was a brilliant, brilliant show. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was your first. That was my first. And then I did The Tempest with Patrick Stewart, who I wonderful guy. But I hated Shakespeare, and I'm like, I have no business doing this. I don't know how I got the role. It was a clown role. It was Stephanie. Yeah, was but the, still. But still, I was like, and it was in a pit of sand because right. it's on a beach. Now, do you think? Do you feel that gay people, a gay actor, should play a gay character? Um, not necessarily. Like a Modern Family, that other guy is not gay. No, he's not. No, I think you know, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I, I, and you know, and I, and, and I know many gay actors that play straight roles. I don't know if I ever will because I'm a comedian and I've already I, you pigeonhole yourself when you are doing something like stand up and you are a gay man. Uh, um, right. As an actor, and you're a personality also, as right. well as an actor. If I was just an actor and I was quiet about everything else, and not quiet about my sexuality, but right, if you not did. being the uh, outspoken person that I am, I guess, uh, I. but I have friends that are just actors and they're gay men and they play straight roles too. I think it's, 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 I, I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem, you know, I only have a problem with the Italian-American thing and the Italian thing because we don't stand up for it. And we're not allowed to play anything that's Mediterranean other than... I agree with you about that. So that's my... Pro- it's not even. Um, yeah. And I think there are more and more gay roles now, so the, the balance, it's never the same. There's plenty yeah. more straight roles, but, you know, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm, yeah good, I'm good with that. I played... Uh, when I did Modern Family, I did this thing where I told the writer, uh, Stephen, he had me, you know, teaching Ed how to play golf and all yeah. this stuff. And I said... Is he gay or not gay? They, and he said, "I don't know." I said, "Like well, in real life, you were asking if he was gay or not gay?" No, or, in the, or, as you, the character. Or you, the character. And he said, "I don't know." And I said, "Well, leave it that. Let's leave it that yeah. way." But let's. I said, "But I'm going to play it very straight, like a real homosexual, like I'm teaching how to play." And I stand behind him, and I'm right on his ass, and I'm <laughs> teaching him how to swing. And I go, and he's like looking at me like. Wondering, and it was great. It was re- great. I loved it. I loved doing because the you, part because that's called giving them yeses and nos. Yes, you know, and I as loved an it. Actor, you you go. I love that too. I think that's that's. And it was great because I always wanted to play a gay guy, but not like well, I no, can't. But you I can. can't. But you. But there are gay men that walk around sounding and walking and talking like you. There's, yes, there's many different ones. So, you know, and then there's ones that are that are that are in between. It, it's. It it there's so many gay actors yeah. that have that that play straight roles because they just you know they can as an actor they can play both and I, and, and, and anything and maybe maybe this is too much to ask I always worry about asking what do you worry about what well, what do you say to a young actor who's who's gay and his parents don't well, if they'll freak out if he comes out I mean you tell them to just hide it or you just tell them to uh, you know. <sighs> What do what? I t- well, what, well, I don't know. Well, when I, people say, what advice do you have for young actors? I go, run. Um, get out. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. It's not an easy. No it's matter hard, what, it's, it's you hard. know, it's fucking really hard. But I think it, I don't know. It depends on their parents. I mean, and it depends on if they want to deal with the repercussions of being 
disowned or really or some, accepted. Some people because will disown be you. One, sure, there are still families that disown you. Disown, like don't ever come here country. again. Yeah, yeah, and it's awful. Terrible. Even today, even today, even today, and with all of this happening, Jesus plenty Christ. of them still. Well, look, you know, the middle of the country. Uh, yeah, you know, you're not in New York. We live in bubbles. We live in New York. True. We live. True. You live in Chicago. You live in L.A. or whatever. It, we we live in bubbles. Uh, the rest of this country. It's, 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 it's a lot of it's not like that. Although I do have to say, I mean, when gay marriage was finally became legal, I mean, when they polled this country, like 70% of the people, including a lot of conservatives were okay with it. Yeah. So, you know, it's, you know, and you always get that argument. Well, they want special rights. No, we don't want special. We just want the same. I mean, I'm look when I was 20 or when I was, when I first met my husband, when I was 30, if I had the opportunity to marry him two years, three years in, I wouldn't have done that because we're not going to have kids. I don't want kids. No, thank you. Don't want them. I flee the area when there are children around. <laughs> um, I, 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 I would, there was no reason to get married. Now, when you get older together and God forbid someone gets sick and you want to be allowed into the hospital room and you want the legalities of who's going to get what when we die. Yes. Cause I think about that all the time. Now yeah. I have dreams um, it's horrifying. Getting older is not fun. And as Betty Davis said after the stroke, old age is not for sissies. Um, no. Yeah, it's not. It's just, and I'm a sissy and it's not for me. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't have got married. But, you know, 20 years in, when it became legal, when um, so you guys Governor Cuomo, Cuomo made it legal here. You're right. And did it for us. And um, we were like, let's do it. And then a year later, we got married. Because I could have done it in Massachusetts. It was already legal there because I'm from there. But we waited for New York. For New York. And I, How long have you been married now? Um, we, we met in June of 1990. I was actually seeing someone else when we met. Oh, and oh. then we became friends. And then a year when I broke up with um, my ex, we became, we started seeing each other the late no, or no, late October 91. Moved in together in March of 92. Mm. And then we got married in uh, 2011 when it became legal. And... <clears throat> that was it and you know but then you you get married because you're like well th th I'm not going anywhere this is it this is it right you know I'm like there's no I'm my whole and now you know all these young gays that meet a guy or meet a girl and, or Dude. meet, a, meet a, a they and th they get married you know after a year or two it's all going to be the same shit that you heterosexuals have been dealing with for years divorce cheating all the same shit and yeah. I'm like wait wait Unless you're going to have kids, wait. Or wait. even if you're not going to have kids, wait. Why get married? It's crazy. I did it because I love him to death and he's the greatest. But at the same time, it's 20 years in. And, you know, I was like, you know, Is it true? I was like, thanks for the anticlimactic marriage yeah, government. Is it true? And I, some people said this to me. And I said, I, I don't know. I said, is it, are, are gay men more promiscuous than, than women are? Oh no! No, no, the, not more. Extra, extra. In other words, in a marriage, do gay men cheat more than a regular a straight marriage? Well, I'll tell you this: men understand men, and when it's two men, it has nothing to do with being gay or straight. Men are men. Men are highly sexual beings. Yes. Period. Um, but when you're with another guy and you are uh, an evolved homosexual, you understand that if 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 someone is with if something happens sexually with someone else, it doesn't break the bank. Look, if someone's having an emotional affair with someone else, that's not good. But we know how to separate sex and love. I, I, and, and yes, I, it's just men the way do, it is. Well, all men do. All that. men do. So it's not even about being a gay or straight man. It's about being a man. And But when a man is with another man, you understand each other. It's not, not to say it's not going to upset you or piss you off, and make you tip a table maybe, but it's not going to break the bank. I'm like this. Divorce is not an option. Unless I find out you're a murderer or a child molester, <laughs> divorce is not an option. That's how I've lived my life with, right, with this right. man that I've been with for fucking 30 the, wow, years. Wow, 34, 34 years. Yeah, 34 years. It's, it's right. 30, well, 30, yeah. See, men, years. I always say men cheat to stay in a marriage. Women cheat to get out of a marriage. I think that's very true. That's very interesting. Huh? I always said that. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and you know, I love women and I, 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 I don't know a lot about them as far as that area. Like that, that I would think that way that they cheat to get out of a marriage. And I think you're right because they're more emotional. 
More, Don't very more, more. M- Where I women. meant to have an affair and not and, and, buy, go, and go home and, and say, go yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, can I get the, is the lasagna ready? Yeah, and just and that and you know what? Not even think about it. Don't think about it because they compartmentalize it and it's not emotional for them. Totally, if it's emotional. Women are way more emotional and good for them, you know, because it. But when you're right, when they cheat, they would want to get out of the relationship. Yeah, when a That's woman cheats on you and you're you married, it's over. Yeah, it's over. It's over. When a man cheats, it doesn't mean it's over. It just means, and I'm not condoning it, but they they just do it. Well, we've grown up with that, too. My yeah. father had so many. So your father women. was a ladies' man. Oh, he was gorgeous, too. He looked like John Garfield. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was so handsome. And, you know. And your mother knew. My mother knew. I remember when we were all at the table for Christmas Eve, and, and Helene, right. who was the head waitress at his, at his restaurant, would call the house once in a while. It was only call for business purposes. She wouldn't. And she, my mother answered the phone and she was like, oh, hi, Helene. Okay, hold on. Merry Christmas. And she gave the phone to my father and she looked at everybody at the table. She went, wasn't I nice? Wow. Oh, my mother was. So she knew. Of course she knew. She didn't know about Philip, the other kid. Uh, But she knew that, yeah, she would look. My mother was that generation of Italian women. They looked the other way. They looked the other way. And my mother was a very depressed woman. She was not a happy woman. Really? No, she was not. And I felt bad because she was sad. And we were not the closest because that I, the fact that I was gay. But she was also rough on my older brother, too, and, and my younger brother. I mean, I, she was she was not a happy woman. And that's just the way it I was. I wonder maybe it was because your dad, because of the cheating. Probably. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, they were married when she was 19. They were young. Back then, that was the and 40s. And they were married a long World, time. World War II. Yeah, yeah. They were married till the day she died, and he died of prostate cancer. He was seventy-five in nineteen ninety-six. He died. Wow! Um, and my mother died in February of eighty-one. That was a long time ago. That's I'm, a while ago. I'm so old; it's horrifying. And how old was your father when he passed? He was seventy-five, but and he was he, fit. He worked out and, all the time. And your was, mother? My mother was fifty-six. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I've passed my mother, and I'm hoping to pass my. Father, because I think about death all the time. It's horrible. Not yeah. to bring down the conversation, but you're no, all no. going to die too. Good night, everybody. No, no. But you know what? The, the, the beauty about death, because I... Beauty? Okay, what is it? <laughs> yes, Mario, seriously. The beauty about death is when you finally accept it and understand it, you become yeah. happy. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because I, was, I, I had a fear. I had a fear like you. Um, and, and, I, and I would read a lot. And I would uh, read books a lot, and I would, and also thirty years of therapy. Yeah, me uh, too. Yeah, thirty me years. Too. Good and for would, you. And, uh, yeah, and I would talk to my shrink about it, and he's brilliant, Doctor Phil Stutz. He's, they did a documentary on him. He's like brilliant, but, but he would say when you accept it and understand it, then it becomes easy. It's like all right, so the, let me live, in the present, because if you think about death constantly all the time. No, I it's it saps away your energy Absolutely. now. So it's going to happen. And I think about that too. I've got to live in the present. You You've cannot got to live in the and present. I usually do, but lately, you know, I've been having dreams. It gets a little yes. scary. But yeah. I've got to. I you, I do try. Look, I have a great capacity to enjoy life to, and have joy in my life. Yes. But you know, you get older, and, and but be, you're right. How old are you now? We're seventy-one. Yeah. <sighs> I, I don't as they say at the Italian wakes you look good though oh well, thanks <laughs> thanks no great. I uh, I go okay so somebody said when I was 60 I go when I was 60 alright well now I'm 70 yeah. 71 so yeah. I go alright and one day I'll be 80 yeah and as long as I work out and stay in shape me too and you look great how well old, let me how tell old you how old are you 60 I'm 64 you, you look crazy no, no. That's what they tell me. No, no, seriously, you look crazy. <laughs> they, well, you know, it's funny. I, I mean, your skin, your hair, I you look, look crazy. Right. I look all right. I'm, I'm, my, my mother and father looked young until they got sick. Yeah. But my father looked really good. My mother did too. It just, you know, the, but look, what I used to work out all the time. Right. And then when I turned 50, I started to get, which is the worst time to stop. I started, my workouts got very inconsistent. And then my late fifties, I was like, "Fuck this! Why can't I worked out my whole life? Why can't I take a pill and just remain I know. like jacked and looking good?" But no, that's not the case. So, in season two of "And Just Like That," the Sex and the City sequel, I was on the phone with Michael Patrick King, the writer and director and creator, and he said to me, "And that's 
and he was going to tell me about my storyline in the second season. And I, the only thing I prayed was, please, God, just don't let him tell me that I have to take my shirt off. That's all I prayed. He said, you're going to be getting naked. I went, what? I said, he, I said, Michael, I only took my shirt off once in my prime on the show on Sex and the City once. And he said, you're going to be getting naked. He goes, look, we can do it without it, but I've known you for years and I know you can get that gladiator workout on and you can do it. And I, in my mind, I went, okay, let's fucking go. Yeah. We started filming in October. I, we weren't filming the, the two sex scenes that I had to do till March. So I hit the floor on November 9th and I didn't stop working out. And I got myself in pretty decent shape. Yeah. And there I am on screen with this beautiful 27-year-old Italian kid. Right. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I'm the one that had to show my ass. He's in like pink flesh panties, not showing shit. He had a beautiful body, so handsome. And he's right. a wonderful actor. He's, I was lucky to get this kid. Sent in one tape and, 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 and they cast him. That's how good he was. And they didn't even do a chemistry test. And the chemistry is wonderful. So... Anyway, I had to show my ass and, you know, be in bed and having sex. Never in my life. I'm like, so I've been sexualized at 64 years old. And it's fantastic because <laughs> on my Instagram, the DMs are blowing up. Blow the boys up. and the girls. Naked pictures, nudes, all of it. Bring it. I'm like this. Your fans love it. I love it. Oh, fans and, you know, people that want you sexually. It's so, I've, I mean, I've had a little bit of that. Now it's a lot and I welcome it because... <laughs> Who doesn't want to feel sexualized at 64 years old? Who doesn't? I've never felt that in my life. I'm like, this is great. Bring it on. Bring I it will on. not me to you. Come on. No, but that's Come grab my but, ass. But it, I don't care. But you see, <laughs> but that's what life is. You you hit this wall where the guy said, listen, man, you got to do it. You went, I'm doing yeah, it. I'm doing it. And that's why you're 64 and you're still successful and you're still known and people love. Now, the great thing about you, and I, and I really, I don't want to blow smoke up your ass. Uh, but I'm a director, so I could do it. I love it. <laughs> okay, so I could do it. But you're, you're like I'm waiting to be directed by you. Yeah, you're you're very well. Anytime. Yeah. You, you're incredibly. Women love you. And but the I great, love women. The great thing about you is, but men love you too. Yeah, men do. You know, I, it's it's ironic. Yeah. When I would, you know, headline at Caroline's on Broadway, and I would fill that room with 400 people and sell out those weekends. Right. It was 90 percent straight people, and I am killing as a gay man and look i didn't talk about being gay a lot on stage because it's like being a you know a right. fat comedian and just doing fat jokes and being right a, right right you know you or, or being you know a, a, a span a puerto rican comedian just doing yes. you know ethnic jokes i did it, it forced me to to go for original material that no one else was doing um especially at the beginning where i didn't really talk about being gay i just didn't lie but I was, you know, I was doing Betty Davis and Julia. Ch if you didn't know, you were an idiot. But, right. but by the early '90s, I started talking about it a little bit. But I don't talk about my relationship on stage. I don't talk. It's just that's I, I don't talk about, you know. But anyway, I I lost my train of thought. But um, no, about talking being gay. About, yeah, yeah. I just, you know, it, it's just I I would sell out these rooms, and all of them were straight. You know, and so it's it straight men, women, and couples. That's my big audience. I mean, I think older, smarter gay men like me a lot, but the younger gay men don't really. I think now maybe because of the show and just like that, they do. But they don't know my history. Now, they don't do, know my history as a gay comedian. Right. They don't know my history. Now, the most people, everybody gets recognized. Over, I always get recognized over Bronx Tale, yes, Usual Suspect. What do you get recognized over? Well, you know, it's it's weird. I can always tell who they are, what what they're going to recognize me from from what they like older women it was always the view because i did the view for 20 years off and on i co-hosted i did musical segments and comedy segments and worked with all of them all through the those years of the view so if they were older women it was usually the view middle-aged women <clears throat> younger women it was sex in the city always 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 um and yeah, like my broadway older gay men my broadway shows um <laughs> or theater goers i could tell and Young black kids and young Latin kids, it was always the Dave Chappelle show. I did one segment on the Dave Chappelle show that was, and I love David with all my heart. I've known him since he was 17. Um, he's brilliant and he's got an yeah. incredible heart. And I did this segment on a show called Ask, Ask a Gay Dude. And what he did was he had, and then he did another segment with Paul, Newmy, Paul Mooney, may he rest in peace, that brilliant comedian, <clears throat> um, called Ask a Black Dude. So he would go out into the field and have people ask questions of gay people and black people that they would never 
have the balls to ask to their face. And they would roll the questions and I would sit in front of it and riff on, on the, on these questions and, and fuck with them. And Paul did his separately. So he did these two segments, ask a gay dude, ask a black dude. He put the black and gay on the same level. And for his urban audience, it's something he needed to do because the last of the great urban homophobia is with, you know, the young black kids and the young Latin kids. It's that, that machismo ism. Really? I think it's better now. Yeah. But back then in the, in the, in the, in the nineties and the two thousands. Yeah. 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 So he did that for a reason. And that's he, and that's why his heart is with the gay community, even though people still don't think. Yeah. That. No, people think that he was really against trans no. and he's not. He had a trans person that he befriended that opened for him. Yes. That ended up killing herself because she was attacked on Twitter. I mean, I don't, I don't understand that people aren't listening to that. I, yeah, lo you know, I I love David and he's my buddy and he um has yeah. you know always been a good man. But anyway, yeah, um, you know, I, and I worked the but, uh, th but there was one time. Yeah, go ahead. I was on my corner. I live across from the projects, so I've seen all these kids grow up, and I right. a lot of great kids in my neighborhood. But there was these young three black kids on the corner, beautiful young man, and he. And I was like, he got all excited because he recognized me. I was like, oh, it's the Chappelle show. Right. And he was like, yo, man, you that comedian. I said, yes, I am. He goes, you, you fucking hilarious, man. I was like, thank you. You fucking hilarious. I love you. He goes, you're the one that does that Liza Minnelli bit. And I was like, what? Like, I literally, and he, he, that's what he knew me from. Wow. And he, you know, he called me the N-word. Like, yo, you my, <laughs> you know, he did that, yeah. which means Everything, everything to someone when you get when you're called. white oh when you're white and right. you get called that you my n-word i'm like i am i'll be anything you want this is the greatest compliment in the world yeah. so he you know that was a shocking thing that it was wow. not that and it was liza minnelli wow wow yeah i you know what mario you're, you're so you're so talented you do everything stage screens i mean I mean, is there any favorite thing that you do? Or is, I, I hate when they ask that I question. I know, but I know. Well, you know, it's so funny. I, I, you know what it's like. I mean, there's nothing like live theater, and there's nothing to me. Like, yes, like, nothing like, like it's exhausting. And when and when the play's over, you're happy. You're happy, and it's like you're off a treadmill. Yes. You're running, running, running. It's always like after a Broadway run or an off-Broadway run, right. you come off that treadmill and then then you get sick. Then right. you get a flu or a You cold. always do. Always, because you're for some reason you're holding it. The adrenaline it. holds it in. He, it's it's right. He, but I, I love the live theater. But it's but I think about it now and go, oh, I'm exhausted. I'd rather <laughs> just I'd rather just do film and, and TV. I know, it's so it nice. is easier. It, and is, it is nicer. Easier. But when you're yeah. younger and you have the energy, you do like theater better because yeah. there's so much waiting around with TV. And so film. much, yeah. You know, you're yeah, right. There's good and bad to both. To both. Now, if someone wants it, no, you have an Instagram, right? You I do. A... At Mac Antone. At M A C A N T O N E. And what do you got coming up? The uh, um, we start season three next year for um, and just like that. And um, what, I'm not doing much right now. No, I got well, that's offers. a lot. Oh, you get, guess what? I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, I'm on my hiatus and I want to do three movies. No, I want to sleep. I'm the laziest <laughs> man in show business. I I love right. to work, but I also love and enjoy my downtime a lot. Yeah, a lot. I do. I do. You know what? So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Look, and I don't get offered a lot of stuff. Some, some, I got off. No. Of, I got off of some show in Australia called Neighbors. Did you ever hear of this? this never heard of it. Big show in yeah. Australia. I would never heard of it either. But I can't do it because it films the same time. But do yeah. I want to go to Australia? I do that I sometimes. I just drove up to you, which was in Canada. <laughs> no, I'm but no. you have a beautiful home. Thank you I so much. I love your wife and your son and your daughter. Yeah, well, they love your, you, Your man. daughter made me eggs. My daughter made you eggs. Oh, I love she her. She never made me eggs. Oh, she, she made them. me beautiful, beautiful. Well, they, they knew you were coming. What? You know, I mean, you're like... Uh, and being in the kitchen with everybody, talking, being loud. It's yeah. just, I'm so comfortable. It... it, it, it because I was so tired coming up here, and it just woke me up. I walked in; the house is beautiful, and the crisp, all the Christmas decorations oh, are gorgeous. Thanks. Oh my god! And then I go in the kitchen, and there's this life: there's cookies and chocolates, and your daughter's making eggs. She goes, "You want eggs?" I'm like, "Yeah, I want eggs. Three <laughs> scrambled eggs. Let's go." And she did it. Yeah, she did it, and That's you right. made me two delicious cappuccinos. Well, so I had a, I had a great time. 
Listen, it was my pleasure. You're you're just an a incredibly talented guy. Well, I hope we get to do some scene work together. In Absolutely. Season three of Gravesend. Absolutely. At least that. I, we, you know what? We got to speak to Willem that maybe we put us in a scene together I somehow. I would love that. It would be great. I would love that. You know that. what? I'm going to mention that to him. Gravesend. Gravesend. That's right. I love it because, you know, look, Gravesend is, it, it is a nice gift to me because yeah. I don't get written roles like that. Let me tell you something about, and I always say this about Willem. Uh, the, uh, you, to do, I said, Will, you're a success already. You wrote, directed, yeah, he's been starred. For years. You write all these episodes. You get, you, you actually raise the money. He got it done. It's a miracle. He's unbelievable. That's the miracle. His drive yeah. and his creativity and right. the way he gets it done. I'm just so I always go, hey, to me. the man got it done. And believe me, he's he's. It's been this kind of. Yeah, uphill struggle for him. He yes. does it, and then he he feels like he. I'm, I don't know this about him, but yeah. I guarantee he does it. Then he feels like he falls back, and then he does it. Yeah. And now it's it. He's he's risen to like yeah. kind of a a peak here. Goes to show you folks what hard work does. Keep doing it. Hard he's work. got drive, and he's he's a hard worker. I'm just a puppet. Yeah. Come get me out of the bed. And by yes. the way, yes. the musical. Yes. Yes. Oh, I wept. Yeah. I wept. I was so moved, and and I. I was with my husband, and it was so fucking funny and so moving. I loved that Broadway musical. I have to tell you, yes, I loved it too. very, very yes. much. And Nick, may he rest in oh, peace, was just gorgeous and God. amazing. Everybody in it, I love that Nick. musical very much. And you know, Alan Menken, he's no slouch. Alan that Menken. son of a bitch is one of the great musical theater yes. and musical film writers. Yes, Alan Menken is. Uh, you know, he hates when I say this. I go, Alan. You're a genius. He goes, ah, please leave no, me alone. And you know, every I time, go, Alan. Oh yeah, you got to live with it. You're a genius. I tell him all the time. I'm like, yeah. you're you you're brilliant. And yes. This, and you know, there's a lot of people that write these musical Disney films. Right. Nothing compares to their their stuff. Yeah. Him, Little Mermaid and uh, Beauty uh, and the Beast and Howard Ashman. Yeah. Howard oh, Ashman. Oh, he was shit. a genius. Gone too soon. And I got to tell you, the guy that the guy that he writes with now, Glenn Slater. Fantastic. 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 Amazing. He's wonderful. Amazing. He made some good choices. We had, and partners we had you know, after. Jerry Zachs, Bob De Niro, oh. Tommy Mottola producing, and Jerry Zaks. Sergio. Love. Oh. A great choreographer. A, a Tony winner. Sergio great. is one of the greatest. One of the greats. And 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 Jerry Zachs, who I adore. I love. Lo yeah. I almost worked with him once. I almost yeah. did Mrs. Doubtfire. But he's a, he knows funny. He knows funny. He knows funny. I adore him. He's a good man too. I good man. Good heart. Well, but I'm you, now I'm going to see you. It. Will God bless. God bless you. Thank all you right, so much. Thanks. It was so wonderful. God bless you all, and I'll see you next week. Uh, don't forget Mondays at eleven o'clock. Go to chasparmentary.net. Come and see the one-man show. God bless.